you for joining me for this conversation. I really appreciate it. Um, as a member of our board, you know, I, I feel like this time, not just for, um, you know, like artists or whatever. And I, you know, I also consider you an artist because you're a playwright and you do all the other things too. Um, but, you know, just to sort of see people's perspective about like what the last 12 months have really felt like and been like, um, and what creativity means in a time where, um, you know, our particular industry is, is sort of at a standstill. What has creativity meant to you over the last 12 months? So with creativity this year has been sort of unexpected. Uh, I have not had the energy or focus to do much writing and that's my primary art form. I remember when this all first started, there were many, many tweets about how Shakespeare wrote King Lear during the plague, and you're just like, yeah. bully for Shakespeare, but um, <laughs> I'm probably not writing King Lear during this plague. However, I did find that I wanted to create creativity as a great escape. Creativity is a way for me to escape without going anywhere, because I, I'm, it's just me and the thing that I'm creating and I'm in that moment, I'm not worried about the pandemic and I'm not feeling sad about all the stuff I can't do because of the pandemic, I'm just doing the thing. So I've gotten into smaller things um, that I'd always been interested in. So things like blackout poetry and making zines and just trying whatever I could. In January, I was actually a part of a month long challenge called Make Don't Break that was organized by Shannon Downey of Badass Cross Stitch. And she would send a email every day and there would be a prompt from a different artist or maker. And, you know, I just tried all different things, collage and clay and just doing things for the sake of doing them. Um, without that pressure, when I write, I tend to think who will produce this, who will published this and it was just like, here's some Play-Doh on my desk. I made some people, why not? So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's been a lifeline, but not writing much, no. <laughs> That's, you know, I, I find it really cool. Um, I, you know, I because I follow you on the gram, um, I, I saw when you were doing that challenge and it was so cool to me that like, there was this like low stakes sort of creativity that, you know what I mean? Cause like you said, like when you're writing, you think about like, who's going to produce this? How's it going to be done? Like, what does this thing actually become? And there's sort of a product that you are sort of expected to, to create. Um, but I really loved seeing some of the stuff that you had done with that challenge because it did look like, um, and like low stakes often sounds like a bad thing, but it's like, we have sort of lost this, um, I feel like a lot of people until the pandemic had sort of lost the art of having a hobby, <laughs> including mm -hmm. myself, you know what I mean? Like, it feels like they're so, um, because there's this push all the time, like kind of from everywhere about like, turn this thing that you're doing into a side hustle or like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. That's my, my pictures are not good enough to sell in an Etsy shop and that's fine. <laughs> Was there anything in particular that you found that you really enjoyed that you hadn't done before? Um, something I've done a few times that I actually based on something I saw a comics artist do on Twitter was drawing my day. And the person I saw did it actually had started doing four panel comics and then had narrowed it down to two panel when she figured out that was a lot for each hour of her waking day and I'm not a great comics artist. And if it was hard for her to come up with a full, you know, these were sort of story, you know, comics with an arc for every mm -hmm. hour per day. I knew I didn't want to do that, but what I've created as a template and used a few times is a 16 um, box grid. And I just do a snapshot of an hour. So there's not supposed to be a story, but it's like what happened between eight and nine that I can capture. Uh, I've done it on a few work days. There are you know, a lot of pictures of here's an email window. Um, here's me on a conference call. Uh, but 
Um, that's that's always been sort of interesting to then have the end result of these 16 little boxes um, of interesting things that happen in the day. So I, I, I will probably do more of those. I think I've done it two or three times so far. What are some of the ways that your life has changed over the last 12 months? So um, you know, I, I'm less impacted than I know a lot of people are. So I have a job that I'm lucky enough to be able to do from home. I had actually been working from home two days a week before this. Uh, so um, I was able to transition fully into that. Uh, but that does mean I'm always here. <laughs> and I don't go out much. My, my husband runs most of the errands. And so, you know, I try to go for walks sometimes, but, you know, either with a friend or on my own. But I really have been here. And I've always considered myself a bit of a homebody. But I mean, this is ridiculous, right? This is, this is more than homebody. You know? And so uh, I am itching to get out and do things. I'm happy the weather's getting warm again. You know, I did more walks and things last summer, and then it sort of slowed down in the winter. So I'm happy to have weather that helps, helps that again. Then the other thing is I'm never alone. <laughs> yeah. So and also I was able to work from home, which again is great uh, that we're both still employed. My children have been doing remote school um, this whole time other than the breaks. And uh, so they're just always here. And I do consider that one of the, you know, one of the, you know, if there's a bright side to a pandemic is the time that we've had together as a family. I really do appreciate it but I'm also an only child who lived alone for over a decade. And every now and then I won't be home alone. And that just really doesn't happen much anymore. <laughs> I look forward to that first day when they all go away and I can just be <laughs> like that alone will be special. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is definitely something that's been very interesting for people um, that either live alone and now are alone all the time or people that don't live alone and are never alone. Because I was, I was talking to my roommate yesterday. I got a car a couple weeks ago. And so I've been driving to one of my jobs. Um, and I was talking to my roommate about it. And I was like, I don't really know why I feel like that time alone in the car is so nice. Because I am home alone a lot because my roommate works four days a week. I kind of realized that it was like, I don't get to be alone outside of the house like ever. So when I'm in my car, it is like the only time that I get to leave the apartment and be completely alone in a way that I don't really get to be, you know, when I go to work or when I go to the school. What are the things that you want to take with you out of this experience? You know, some of it are just, you know, general lessons, like live life to the fullest, which sounds very cliche, but they're, you know, that go do things, I, you know, I, I appreciate uh, theater and museums and concerts even more than I did before um, and in just getting out and going out and appreciating them which I, I did a decent amount but you know that still there are you know many things that I would put off and the show would close or whatever and you know just really you know not missing out on the opportunities to live a life with stimulus outside of your own home. <laughs> um, the, and then a habit that I've gotten into or a hobby or whatever you want to call it, um, sending mail. So it's my thing to reach out to people um, who I cannot see in person, some of which I've never met. I, I've picked up some pandemic pen pals, but then also friends who I miss. Um, I particularly like postcards. Postcards are sort of low effort. The, the picture does a lot of work for you. And I do choose my pictures like this is the picture that this person would appreciate. Then you can just write a little note and it can just be like, hey, I was thinking of you. You're doing OK. And, um, and I, it's a lot of fun for me. Some people write back. Some people don't. I'm fine with that. I'd, I'd rather not get something back than feel that somebody sent me something because they felt obligated. And, um, but I'd like to keep doing that, even, even when we can see people in real life, because mail is fun. 
It is. I've gotten in the habit of also writing letters and cards and things to friends. Um, one of my cousins and I have been pen pals for most of our lives because she is like two years older than me. And um, she lives, she lived in Florida and now she lives in, in Seattle. So pretty much throughout our lives, we've been in very different physical places. Um, so it's been really delightful to sort of have more regular uh, correspondence with her, but also like other friends from college and stuff like that, that like, we don't talk all that much, but like we, you know, we had a, a strong friendship back in the day. So it's been nice to like, just be able to send notes to people and be like, how are you? Happy, you know, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, all the good things. And just like, it's kind of nice to have like an actual like tangible thing to be like, I miss you. I know, which sounds like a little Jane Austen-y, <laughs> but like. No, that's exactly why I got into it is somebody had sent me a thing and, and I had a very profound moment where I was like, that person touched this and now I am touching it. And it was a physical connection at a time where we don't get to have physical connections with a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe cheesy, but I like it. <laughs> so besides things you want to take with you, are there any things that you would like to leave behind in the last 12 months? Besides this pandemic? Right. <laughs> just general dormancy um, I need to get rid of. I, I, uh, I was never much of an exerciser. You know, I do Pilates once a week or something, but I walked not for exercise. I just walked. That was a big part of my lifestyle. And now I don't go anywhere. So, <laughs> and even when I, you know, normal work day, yeah, I work an office job, but I would go to a conference room and then I'd go back to my desk and then I'd go to someone's office and I'd go back to my desk. Well, this is my conference room. This is my office. This is someone else's office. This is everything is within this, this area. And um, I can feel, you know, I, I can feel the uh, sedentary lifestyle setting in, you know, not just from a weight perspective, which is, you know, just a number, although it can be a depressing number, but more just general health. I just don't, I just don't feel good. And that's part of why I'm happy it's getting warmer. So I will, I will go walk more. Gotta get out there. It's good to hear about how you've been, you know, staying creative and also just like living life. 